Have you been living your life as if you happen to get another shot? It's not that you don't have time for the action, it's that you're making up excuses as to why you're too busy to actually take that action. Everything around you is your decision. Stop acting like you don't have power or control over your life. Have you been living your life as if you happen to get another shot? Have you been living your life as if maybe, you know, if you think to baseball, like you're not on, you're not at the batter's box yet. You're kind of on deck and maybe, you know, I'll get another chance. I'll get another chance. I'll get another chance. Do you live your life as if you just happen to get another chance? Or do you live your life as if this is the only thing that I know is that I have it and I'm going to take full advantage of it? Do you follow your dreams or do you watch Netflix? Do you work for the business that you want to create or do you scroll on Instagram? Do you live your life as if this is the only one that you have or do you live your life as just maybe, yeah, I'll get another chance someday. Knowing, we all know, that you don't get another chance. This is the one that you have. You know, there's so many people live as if tomorrow is just guaranteed. One of the things I've been pulling in as a practice to myself, I did it this morning, is I take about two minutes while I'm still laying in bed and I look up at the ceiling and I look there and I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I finally, I get another day, I get another day. And for, I mean, 34 years of my life, I never did this. And I'm like, I can't believe I get another day. How amazing is it? Because there's so many times that I've woken up in my life and I'm like, oh, I have so much stuff to do today. I've got so much I got to do. I've got to go. I don't even, I want to go meditate, but I might not even have time to meditate. Like I've, I got to go chug some coffee because I got a call I got to hop on. Then I got to work out. I got to do this, this, this. Versus just sitting there for a second being like, oh my God, I woke up today. How freaking amazing is that? Do you live your life as if you happen to get another one? Or do you live your life as if, you know, this is it and this is all that you got? Because so many people live as if tomorrow is just guaranteed. And you know, if you've heard me say the statistics before, 150,000 people did not wake up today that woke up yesterday. 150,000 people died yesterday. You didn't. You're listening to this. Are you living today as if today is the very last day of your life? I remember I was listening to a, um, a great talk between um, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Larry King. I think Larry King just died, if I'm not mistaken. But um, if he didn't, Holy crap, that guy's still alive. <laughs> but I don't know if he's alive or not. I should probably Google it. But uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he was being interviewed by Larry King. It was a few years ago. And Larry King said, they were talking about life and life after death and other planets and aliens and all kinds of stuff. Larry King said, if you could live forever, would you? And Neil deGrasse Tyson said, no. And then he asked Larry King if he would. And he said, absolutely. And Neil deGrasse Tyson said, the reason why I wouldn't want to live forever is because if I live forever, then it gives me no urgency to do anything. Like death, the, um, the death that we're going to have brings immediate uh, urgency to my life. And I think most people don't live like that. They don't live and they don't think about how their death is coming to them. Like they're, it's every breath we get closer. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but I'm trying to be honest. Like when you think to yourself, it's going to happen one day, it makes me personally be like, I need to start working harder to do what it is I want to do, make the impact in the world, to, to change it in some sort of way, to change myself, to make the people around me better. You might not wake up tomorrow. And if you didn't wake up tomorrow and you're off in wherever people go after they die, will you look and be like, damn, there's so much more that I wanted to do that I could have done, but I just acted like I didn't get into this. I act like I was just going to be here forever. Have you been living your life as if you're just going to be here forever and you're just... I'm just that immortal person that stays here forever. I can do whatever the hell I want. You know, I'm going to waste it on Netflix. I'm going to waste it on Instagram scrolling. I'm going to waste it on doing things, you know, worrying about things that don't matter when 85% of the time, none of those things actually happen in the first place. If you knew that today was your last day, what would you have missed out on in your life? If you knew today was the very last day of your life, what would you have missed out on of the past 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of your life? What would you know that you missed out on because you were acting like you might get another shot? You were not putting urgency to taking action in your life. What chances didn't you take? What things didn't you do on your bucket list that you wanted to do, but you were telling yourself, I'll get to it someday down the road. I'll try it later on. I'll figure it out sometime. It's like the story of a guy who he, uh, he was going to retire and he had saved all of this money 
for him and his wife to go and travel because their dream was to travel. So he was like, you know what? I'm gonna get to retirement age. And then what I'm gonna do is then we're gonna be able to go travel. And so he works, 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 gets to this retirement age and, and, and his, his wife's like, all right, well now you can retire. We can go out and do the traveling we planned for. He's like, let me get just one more year. I'll get one more year so I feel that I'm fully responsible, like financially good to go, responsible, we're locked in for life. Let me get one more year. And then I swear to you, 365 days from today, we're gonna go traveling and I'm gonna be done. And she's like, okay, you can do that. And in those 365 days, she died. And he didn't get to travel with his wife the way they want to. And now he's stuck there by himself, having all these dreams and all these places he wanna go to with his wife. And now he's just got his money, but he doesn't have his wife and he doesn't have anyone to travel with. So why are you living your life like that? As if you're just guaranteed tomorrow, as if you're just guaranteed next year. What chances didn't you take? What places, if you died today, what places did you not travel to that you've been wanting to travel to, but you've just been pushing it off because there's a couple other things that are a little bit more important at this part, at this point in your life. What were you not able to give your loved ones? What were you not able to give your children if you died today and you look back in the rest of your life? What were you not able to give your spouse with your family? What were you not able to give them that you wanted to give them, but you were telling yourself it just wasn't the time yet. And I want to be honest with you. And I want you to think about these things because I want to kind of shake you up sometimes. Like I want to shake you up and make you start thinking about your life. It's like when someone that you know dies and you go to their funeral, you start thinking about your life a whole lot more, don't you? You start thinking about, man, I never thought they were going to die. They missed out on so many things. How many things have I missed out? What if I died? And sometimes people make changes after someone's funeral. Sometimes they feel like they're gonna change. And then a couple weeks down the road, life just kind of goes back to normal and they forget all about it. But if I were to ask you on a scale of one to 10, one being like absolutely terrible, 10 being like the best possible life that anyone has ever lived in the history of mankind, what would you rate your life as of right now and how much you've gotten out of your life up until this moment? Answer the question, what is it? On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate your life as far as what you've done, how much you've gotten out of it, how much, how many dreams you've followed, how many places you've traveled, how many bucket list items you've knocked off? What would you rate it on a scale of one to 10? Think about that for a second. Have you taken all of the risks? Have you done all of the things? Have you traveled all the places? Or have you lived your life in fear? Have you worried too much? Have you wasted too much time doing things that didn't matter? Have you worried too much about what others would think about you? And so you've held yourself back because of it. You haven't followed your dreams. Which one is it? And now looking forward, which one would you like it to be? You know, if you rate yourself as a six in your life right now, what's the difference between a six and an eight? And what would add an extra two points to that number over the next year to get you to an eight? What shifts and changes and moves would you have to do in your life in order to get you to go from, I think I'm a six out of a 10 in my life to an eight out of 10 in my life. One of the things that I love, and I've heard this a couple of times in a couple of different ways from a couple of different people is, is if you imagine God has a checklist for you, right? And he's just checking off all the things. And it's like, Rob Dial, he's going to do this. 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 And it's all of the things that you could possibly do and all the things you could possibly be. And you know, some of them are checking off and some of them aren't everything that you could do, everything you could see, everything that you could achieve, all of the lives that you could impact, all the chances that you could take the full on hell. Yes. Accomplish everything. Rob dial life is what it'd be for me and whatever it would be for you. My goal is to get to the end of my life and to have God have this checklist and go, damn, you literally checked off all of them and some of them that I didn't even have on here. Like you did even better than I thought you were going to do. That's what my goal is to do. Another example of the way I've heard it explained is, is imagine that your perfect self, your most enlightened, badass, accomplished everything, did everything, impacted the lives, made the money, had the success, had the love, had the joy, built the best family, built the best businesses, changed the world as much as possible. Most enlightened version of yourself is waiting for you in heaven and you die my goal is to get to the end, to see that version of me and we're twins. Not to see that version of me be like, oh, sh I could have done that. I could have done that thing. Oh my God, I didn't, I could have done that. I don't want to get to the end of my life and feel like that's the way I want to feel. I want to get to the end of my life and see the most enlightened, the best, did as much as they possibly could, changed the world as much as they possibly could, loved as much as they possibly could, built the family they possibly could. And I look at myself and I'm like, I'm looking in a mirror. 
What would that look like? Think of those two things. What would the checklist look like that God would have? And what would your twin look like that if you got to the end of your life, that you became, you were the twins with that person, which is your best, highest, most enlightened self. What would that look like for you? You know, what I would recommend is take a pen and paper on, literally just spend the next 15 minutes, put me on pause, journal through this. If you pause me, I'll be here forever waiting for you. I'll literally be here forever until you decide to push play again. Pause me and write down all of the things that you want to do, that you should do, that you know you have the opportunity to do, but you just haven't been doing and you want to do. So think about that for a second. You have to think about this and think, okay, if I rate myself at a level six out of 10 right now, what would I need to do over the next 365 days to bring that number up to that eight that we're speaking about earlier? What would I need to do? Okay, you know what I need to do? This job that I have, it's, it's soul sucking. It's not fulfilling in any sort of way. And I know I've been wanting to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to start making a plan and start making movement into doing whatever that thing is. It might take a year to transition out of my job so I can pay my bills. It might take two years, but at least I'm starting to make movement into the direction of what it feels like I'm actually truly supposed to do. And if you don't know what it is you're supposed to do, you don't know what your true purpose and path in life is, I always say this to, to kind of give you the idea. It's okay right now not to know what your purpose is, but it's not okay to not wake up every single day and constantly be in the pursuit of trying to find what that purpose is. So if you don't know what your purpose is right now, no big deal. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you're one of the people who doesn't know what your purpose is, then it is a crime for you to wake up every single day and not be in constant freaking pursuit to find out why the f you're alive. If you just wake up and do the same thing that you did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that, it's an absolute crime. If you don't know what your purpose is, that's okay. But it is an absolute crime if you wake up every single day and you're not in constant pursuit to find what that thing is. If we're planning out 365 days from today, make a checklist of all of the things that you need to do in order to move your life from a six out of 10 to an eight out of 10. What do you want your body to look like? You know, what, if your body's a six out of 10, what would an eight out of 10 look like? What do you need to do to get there? What does your family look like at an eight out of 10? What does your relationship with your children look like at an eight out of 10? What does your relationship with your spouse look like at an eight out of 10? What is the relationship with your parents, with your brother, sister, cousins, best friends? What does that look like to become an eight out of 10? What does your bank account look like to go from a six to an eight out of 10? What does your mindset look like to go from a six to an eight out of 10? And what are all of the things that you need to do and you need to accomplish and you need to be laser-like focused on over the next 365 days to bring yourself from a six to a 10? Because here's the thing that we all know. If we put work in, we know we'll change. Think of where you could be 365 days from today if you just started today. What do you need to do to get there? How much work do you need to put in? What things do you need to check off? Don't worry about the rest of your life because you're gonna die one day. It's freaking happening. So am I, it's happening, right? Don't worry about the rest of your life. Just worry, don't worry about the, the next 365 days. Plan for the next 365 days, but just worry on today. Think about today. If I wanna get to an eight out of 10 in my body, what do I need to do today to get myself from a six to a 10, or six to an eight in the next, year? What do I need to do today? What's the first step that I need to take to get myself from a six to an eight, from a six to an eight, to move up a couple different steps? What does that look like? What does my mindset look like? What does my body look like? What does my bank account look like? What does my business look like? What does my family look like? What does my every single relationship in my life look like? What does every single thing look like if Rob from six out of eight decided to show up as Rob or six out of 10 decided to show up as Rob of eight out of 10? What is the difference in the delta between the six and the eight? What is the difference in my actions? What is the difference in my focus? What is the difference in every single thing, every single thing that I do, think, be? What does that look like? And how do I need to make sure that I focus on that today? I don't care about the rest of your life. I don't care about the next 365 days. I care about today and what you do today to shift yourself over the next year, to shift yourself over the next five years, over the next 10 years, hopefully over the next 50 years, but the only thing that matters is just today. Nothing else matters because we don't even know if we're gonna to get tomorrow. But what really matters is today. How can I make sure that I get every single bit of everything out of today? And that's all I gotta focus on. And when I wake up tomorrow, how can I get every single bit of happiness, love, joy, peace, success, everything out of tomorrow? 
and that's all that matters. And if you do this every single day, every single day, it'll stack and stack and stack and stack and stack on top of itself. And then you do wake up 365 days from today and you're like, holy shit, life is completely different than it was a year ago. But only because the only thing that I focused on was every single day, every single day, because damn it, I woke up. I'm grateful for that I woke up and I'm not going to give a kick in the face to God or the universe because I decided to sit around and waste that. Shit. What about you? What does an eight out of 10 look like? What does a nine out of 10 look like? What does a 10 out of 10 look like? Because you don't get another chance. This is the only one that you got. Stop living your life as if you get another chance. Stop living your life as if you're in the on deck circle because you're in the batter's box. That is how you should be living your life. I'll say this before we dive in. We're all busy. I mean, if you're listening to me right now, have you ever used the phrase, I'm too busy? Oh, I'm so busy right now. Have you said that in the last week? You said in the last month? Oh, I'm just so busy. I've said it a bunch of times. And we all have things going on, you know? There's work, there's kids, there's bills, there's cleaning the house, there's doing chores, there's laundry, you've got to mow the lawn, you've got to do your clothes, you've got to iron, you got to put them back on the, put them away in the dresser, you've got to hang them up, you've got to, we have so many, as humans, we do so many things. We got to eat, we got to go to the bathroom, we got to drink water, we've got to put stuff inside the refrigerator, like we've got so many things, so many different actions that we do as humans. And with that, we all have so many excuses that we could give as to why we are so busy and we have too many things going on to create the life that we want to. We have all of the excuses, but you have to think about this. We do a lot of things, but the question is, do we do the right things? Do we do the things? Are we currently doing things in our life that are moving the needle towards the life that we want to create? Think about that for a second. Are you taking action or are you taking action towards the desired outcome that you want in your life? Are you doing the needle moving activities to change your life? Because if you're not, your life is going to be exactly the same 365 days from today as it is right now, unless you're doing needle moving activities. You could still keep doing the laundry and I'm not saying don't do the laundry and you can start keep doing all the things that you need to and get those things done, but it's not needle moving activities. There'll always be things that you have to do. You have to sleep. You know, you have to brush your teeth. You have to do those things. You have to do them. But are you prioritizing the things that you need to get done over everything else? Let me give you an example of what I mean, because all of us are different and we all have different things that we need to do. And that's what we're going to dive into today is this conversation came up in a coaching group that I run. Um, I teach coaches how to grow coaching businesses. I teach literally coaches how to grow online coaching businesses. It's called Business Breakthrough. And somebody asked a question uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about this, where she was saying, as I'm trying to build my business, I'm running out of time. Like I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to run, run out, I'm trying to build this, but I'm running out of time. And I had another friend that was saying, hey, I'm trying to lose weight. And I'm just trying to get in the shape that I want to, but I just don't have enough time once I get done with work. And I heard this a couple times and I was like, huh, this is an interesting thing that people say. I should probably talk about this. So I was in this conversation with my friend who's trying to lose weight and they were saying, I don't have time. I try to get as much, I try to work out as much as possible, but I just run out of time so many days. And I was like, that's interesting. And I said to, I said to her, I said, um, just, just kind of curious, um, you know, you have children, you know, there's seven and five. Um, how many days have you run out of time and, and not fed them? And she's like, what? And I was like, how many, how many times, you know, let's take your seven year old, for instance, over the course of the seven years that he's been alive. What is that? Uh, it's two, 20, 2300 days, something around there, 2200, 2300 days. How many days have you been so busy that you, you were like, ah, I ran out of time. I didn't, I didn't feed my son. She's like, um, none. I was like, really? Huh? <laughs> That's interesting. There's never one day where you're like, I'm too busy. I can't feed my son. And she's like, no, that'd be ridiculous. And I was like, oh, so what you're telling me is that feeding your son is a priority for you. She's like, absolutely. I said, you will only succeed at losing weight when you put losing weight and working out and eating healthy as a priority for you. I'm not saying that, that going to the gym is as important as feeding your son. But what I'm saying is in your brain, it needs to be as important. You would never go to sleep with your son not being fed. You should never go to sleep without the workout if that's what you said you were going to do. You don't run out of time. You just don't plan your time efficiently to make sure that the action is taken to create the 
body that you want, to create the life that you want, to create the business that you want. So the problem is, it's not that you don't have time for the action, it's that you're making up excuses as to why you're too busy to actually take that action. She was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Working out hasn't been a priority for me. And I was like, I know. There are some people that working out is a priority and they do have two kids exactly like you do. What's the difference? Their mindset around the priorities. I'm not saying don't feed your kids. That's the exact opposite of what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't do the laundry. I'm not saying don't clean the house. I'm not saying don't run your business. I'm not saying any of those things. What I'm saying is, is that the most important actions, the needle moving actions in your life need to be as much of a priority as feeding your children. Feed your children, of course, but also get your ass to the gym. Feed your children, of course. If you don't have children, do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? Do you have a bird? Feed your animal or feed your child, whatever you might have, and go to the gym. Build your business and feed your child. Do all of those things. Don't go to bed until the action is done. Same way that you never go to bed and not feed your children is exactly the same way that you should never go to bed and not have that action done. And so I asked her that question, and the reason why it was, it's, it's super, super important to think this is because the reason why you need to have this reprioritization in your mind is because of the fact that if you don't, you're not going to do what needs to be done. But it needs to be that, that important for you. So we could all make to-do lists right now that could be 75 things long. But are those things going to be all needle-moving activities in your life? Absolutely not. So how can we look at the things that we know are needle-moving and prioritize those over everything else? And it's very simple. You plan the life that you want, you figure out what actions need to be taken, and then you prioritize those actions over everything else. You don't go to bed until they're done. That's how committed you need to be to your goals. I do not go to bed until X is done. I don't go to bed until my workout is done. I don't go to bed until I make a hundred cold calls. I don't go to bed until I have, you know, eaten the food that I need to. I don't go to bed if if I, uh, I don't go to bed if I haven't told my spouse I love them. Whatever it is that you're trying to, I don't go to bed unless I've meditated for the day. Whatever it is that you're trying to create, you need to prioritize those goals and they need to be that important to you. And you don't go to bed until they're done. And it comes down to this simple phrase. If it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. How many people, we've seen movies on it, how many people have run out of money, they've been on the streets, they haven't had whatever it is that they need, but they've done what needs to be done in order to feed their children. Maybe they steal. Maybe they borrow some stuff. Maybe they figure out a way to make money because they need to pay their kids. If it's, they need to pay their kids, they need to feed their kids. If it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. You'll never run out of time to feed your children. It's a priority. It gets done no matter what. And that's the mindset that you have around it. As a parent, I'm going to feed them. I'm going to take care of them. What is supposed to be done will be done. That's what your life is built off of. Well, can it also be built off of that? Can, can the, the things that are most important that move the needle also be built the same way in your mind? And so I wanna ask you this question. Let's take the next three months of your life. Let's think about the most important activity over the next three months in your life. Do you prioritize it? Just ask yourself, and it's be honest. Do you prioritize it? Is it a priority for you? How many times have you tried that thing and given up? Let's say weight loss is a thing. How many times have you tried losing weight, but you've given up? How many times have you tried losing weight and you've given up? How many diets have you tried, but then you gave up? How many times have you said, today's, this is the year. This is my year to get in shape. My New Year's resolution is I'm going to lose weight. And then you've freaking given up on it. Think about that for a second. What do you do on a daily basis though? That's not a priority. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out number one, what is your priority? Write that down with pen and paper. If you have your pen and paper, what is your priority over the next three months? That is a needle moving activity. I don't need you to figure out a hundred different things. I just need you to figure out one for right now. What is that one thing that is a needle moving activity for you? Write it down with pen and paper. Now I want you to think about all of the things that you do on a daily basis that are not priorities for you. Think about it. Doing the laundry, you know, maybe it's uh, doing the dishes, watching TV, scrolling on Instagram. Think of every single action that you take that is not a priority for you. And then ask yourself a couple questions. Are there any of these things that could be outsourced? Like, is it possible that these things can be outsourced? Like for instance, I have a lawn. I don't mow my lawn. I did at one point mow my lawn, but I stopped. Why? Because it takes a couple hours, a couple times, uh, it takes a couple hours over the course of a month. I could use those hours doing something to, that is the priority for me. Now, some of you are like, yeah, but I don't have the money to pay for someone to mow my lawn. Okay. 
Well, is there anything else that could be outsourced? And if you were to outsource mowing your lawn and use those, let's call it four hours over the course of a month, could you make more than that four hour, that, more than the money that you pay the person to be able to actually pay them so that you can go and do the thing that is the priority for you? Is there stuff that could be outsourced? You know, if we're talking about cleaning the house, is it possible for you to have someone clean once a month that would at least help to have them come every couple weeks? Is there a way to outsource some of the things that are not a priority for you? That's what I want you to do. So you're gonna make a list of all of the things that you do on a daily basis and add to this list throughout the day as you do things. Oh, I do this, oh, I do this, oh, I do this, oh, I do this. That are all of the things that are not a priority and start to ask yourself, is it possible for me to outsource these? Is it possible that you can ask someone that you live with to help with these things? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's someone that you live with. Maybe you can assign one of your children to do the laundry for the month. Maybe you can have one of your children to do the dishes for the month. Is it possible for you to assign somebody that you live with some of these tasks? What about work? Is it possible for you to assign somebody that you work with to do some of the tasks that you're doing that you don't need to do that are not a priority for you? I know people when they get promoted, some people will completely change the things they do. Some people will do, do the job that they don't need to be doing because they don't trust other people to do it. So. If you're at work and you're doing things that are not a priority for you to move the needle, can you outsource that to someone else? Is there someone else that can help you? And then when you look at the list of things, what are those things that you actually need to stop doing? Right? So if you're like, oh, I don't have enough time, but then you're watching Netflix for an hour every single night, where did that freaking time come from? To say that you don't have time, but you have a Netflix subscription and you watch it, that's bullshit. You're lying to yourself. You can keep lying to yourself if you want, but the numbers don't lie. And if the, the success in your business or you're on the scale or whatever it is, they don't lie. And so could you prioritize your life differently and say, oh, you know what? Yeah, maybe over the next three months, I won't watch any Netflix. I'll prioritize this one thing and just go for this one thing. What would your life look like if you decided to switch some things around and actually start doing that? And then you start asking yourself, am I being busy or am I being productive? <clears throat> so this is important to think about. We're busy all day long. We all are because we're all doing something. Even if we're doing nothing, we're still doing something. If, even if we're just sitting around watching Netflix, we're still watching Netflix. Even if we're just sitting on the couch scrolling on Instagram, we're still on Instagram. We're still doing something even when we're doing nothing. Even if we're just staring at the ceiling and breathing, we're still just breathing, right? We're doing something always. We're all so busy. But the question is, are you busy or are you productive? Have you ever had a day where you're just, you're like a chicken with your head cut off? You're doing things, you're doing things, you're doing things, you're doing things. And then you get home or you lay your head down and you're like, man, I was busy all day and I feel like I got nothing done. Have you ever had one of those days before where you're just so damn busy, but for some reason you feel like you got nothing done? Well, do you wanna know why that is? Because you were busy, you weren't productive. And so if you feel like you're busy all day and you're not moving the needle, it's because you're not working on the things that are gonna, that are priorities for you, should be priorities for you, that are gonna move the needle. And so simple tip, if you've been listening to me for long enough, that'll just help you conquer this real quickly. It's the simplest thing. I tell this people all the time and when they actually start using it, they're like, this is so simple and it also helps so much. You make your to-do list every single morning. You go through and you look at it and you say, okay, what is number one, what is number two, and what is number three that are the number one, number two, number three most needle moving activities that I put down on this list? You circle them. Okay, that's number one. Okay, that's number two. Okay, that's number three. And then what you do is you take a three by five card you write down number one, you write down number two, you write down number three, and you put it in your back pocket and you don't go to bed until all three of those things are done. That's it. It's that simple. And that is how you have a productive day is because when you feel like you're busy but not productive, it's because you're not checking off the boxes of things that are important. You're just checking off your, <clears throat> excuse me, you're just checking off your to-do list. And that's not going to do anything for you, just checking off to-do list. And I know so many people, because I say this all the time and people always laugh, so many people out there, you made your to-do list in the morning, you wrote it all down, you're like, cool, oh my God, I got my, my, my to-do list, I've got 32 things on my to-do list. And then you go and do something that's not on your to-do list, and you come back to your to-do list, and you write that thing down on your to-do list, and then you cross it off so you get that feeling of, hey, I did it. That thing was probably not a priority for you. <clears throat> it's probably not the needle moving activity that you needed to take. So when you create your to-do list every single morning and then you figure out number one, number two, number three, and you put them on a three by five card, you say, I do not go to bed until this is done. I'm going to focus on these three things. And those are the three things that are going to move the business, the, my relationship, my family, my body, whatever it is you're trying to work towards. These are the three needle moving activities that I need to get done today. 
Then you don't do anything until number one is done. Then you don't do anything until number two is done. And then you don't do anything until number three is done. And then my question to you is, do you take those things and you put them into your schedule? Do you stick to a schedule in the first place or you just kind of run around with a chicken with, like a chicken with your head cut off? These are not like, hey, if I get time for it kind of things. Like I was telling you about my friend who's trying to lose weight. If I get time for it, I'll work out. If it's something that's, a, I get, if I get time for it, it's not a priority for you and you don't really care. You don't think to yourself, you know, well, I will feed Jonathan if I get time to. No, it's like, it's gonna be done. So your priorities should never be a, if I get time for it kind of thing. Your priorities are, I don't care what happens. I'm going to get it done today. And if you do that, those are the ways that you're going to move the needles the quickest in your life, in your business, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your wealth, everything is that you figure out what the most important things are and you crush them every single day, no matter what. And they are just as high as a priority for you as everything else is in your life. There's a beautiful quote that says, you're born looking like your parents, but you'll die looking like your decisions. And the idea behind this is that too many people think because they were born into a certain family or they were born into a certain neighborhood or they were born into a certain religion or belief system that they're going to stay that way forever. And that's just the cards that they were dealt and they just have to deal with it that way. They never actually think outside of the circumstances that they were given, the family that they were given, the religion that they were given, the neighborhood that they were given, the skin color they were given, the sexuality they were given, all of those things. They never think outside of it and saying, you know, maybe I am not what I've been given. Maybe I am whatever I build myself up to be. You know, there's a, that beautiful story of the two twin brothers, right? And their father's an alcoholic. And years down the road, one of the, one of the brothers is an alcoholic and the other one is a successful businessman. And they go up to the one who's a successful business, or the two who's an alcoholic, and they say, why are you an alcoholic? And he says, I'm an alcoholic because my father was an alcoholic. And they go up to the one that's a successful businessman. And they said, why are you a successful businessman? And why are you not an alcoholic? He said, I'm not an alcoholic because my father was an alcoholic. And that gives you the perfect example of you were given the cards you were given. You were given the life you were given, the family, the neighborhood, the skin color, whatever it is that you're dealing with, you were given that. That is the cards that you were given. You can't choose your parents. You can't choose your family. You can't choose any of that but you can choose whether or not you want to be similar to your parents, whether you want to be different than your parents, whether you want to be similar to the people in your neighborhood or in your family, or whether you want to be different than them. And you can pick the good and then you can leave behind the bad if you want to. You're not stuck in the same position. You're not a tree. You can change at any moment and move to any circumstance and any life that you want, but your life is a, and what your life will become is just simply a result of the decisions that you make. The big decisions that you make in your life can be like the people that you marry, the person that you marry, the, if you decide to have children or not. Those are all big decisions. And of course your life is going to change with those big decisions. But there's also these little tiny decisions that most people don't usually think about. Those little teeny tiny decisions are sometimes more important than the big decisions because they create who you're going to be. And that's a beautiful thing to think about. And the moment that your life will change, if you haven't done this yet, the moment your life changes when you decide to take accountability for everything in your life. You decide to take accountability for your current circumstances, for what you look like, for what you feel like, for your bank account, for your business, for your relationships, for your family. You decide to go, you know what? I'm gonna take accountability for every single aspect of this. It, even if nobody else decides to ever step up and take accountability for it, I'm going to take accountability for it. I'm going to make the decision that I am the one that's in control here. And a lot of people will think, okay, if I just say that I'm gonna take accountability for everything, that sounds like I'm putting myself into a box. It feels like I'm stuck in a box and I can't get out of this box because I'm literally stuck here. What am I supposed to do? I'm, stu I'm stuck in this box. All of this stuff is my decision. But in reality, that's when you really step into your power is when you realize that your decisions are what make you. And from now on, from this moment on, I'm going to make a decision right now that from this moment, every decision that I make, I'm going to put in with more intention towards the desired outcome that I want in my life. That's that simple. Just the desired outcome that I want in my life. I do want to say this. A lot of people like to go through life and not make the decision to step up. You know, they, they, they're like, you know what? I'm going to play small. I'm okay with playing small. I'm okay with dimming my flame. I'm okay with just staying where I am. I'm not gonna make the decision to step up. To not make the decision to step up your life and to take control of it is still a decision. You realize that, right? It's still a decision. 
whether you want it to be the decision that, it, that you want it to be or not, or whether it is the decision that you want it to be or not, it's still a decision. So either you make a decision to fully step into your full power, to your full light, to the amazingness that your life can be and that you can create it to be, or you decide to make a decision to leave the same that it's always been, to not make changes, to stay inside of your comfort zone, to not bring out your full potential and to not change the world in the ways that you can, big or small. What's your decision? You've got to make the decision at some point in time. Are you going to create the life that you want or are you just going to stay the same? What's your decision? So if you're born into this world looking like your parents, but you leave this world looking like your decisions, let's talk about some of the decisions that you consciously or unconsciously making at all points in time. Your body is an easy example. The reason why it's easy is because it's, it's a physical thing in the physical reality. You can see your body. If you're looking at your body right now and you're like, damn, this thing looks good. And when you put on your clothes and you're naked and you're like, damn, that body looks good. That's a result of your decisions that you've made. Big decisions and small decisions. If you look at your body and you don't enjoy the way that it looks, or you know that you could be treating it better, that it could look better, that is a result of your decisions. Nobody else's decisions. It's your decisions. So when we look at that, you're born with the same genes as your parents. Sure. Some people are saying, oh yeah, but you know, my father had this disease or my mother had this issue. It runs in my family, right? It's like that phrase, not to be offensive, but truthful. And someone's like, well, you know, obesity runs in my family. It's like the phrase is, it's not obesity that runs in your family. It's that nobody runs in your family. It's, it might be that your genes, it is harder for you to lose weight, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. Whenever you say something, I have this, I am this, this is something that I'd be given in my genes. And obviously I understand there's stuff outside of our circumstances in rare cases. Somebody's born with something, they're born with the disease, they have, you know, something that's, that's there. But I'm talking to like 95% of people who don't have something and they're just using their excuses as to why they're not going to step up and finally take control of their life. So if you look at your body, we're born with our parents' genes in some sort of way, but it doesn't mean that when I die, my body needs to look the same as my father's when he died. It doesn't mean that because I never saw my father work out once ever in my entire life, doesn't mean that I shouldn't work out. And it also didn't see my dad eating healthy, right? Doesn't mean that I should treat my body the same way he did. I also saw my father being an alcoholic. Doesn't mean that I should step up and do the same thing, right? What I've decided, because my father was an alcoholic, his father was an alcoholic. It's a generational thing. It ends up happening this way. And if you look through many, many families, it's very common that if somebody's family father was an alcoholic or mother was an alcoholic, it's usually that their father or mother's an alcoholic and so on and so forth. It's a generational thing. I made the decision that it stops with me. I'm just not going to be an alcoholic. My mom's been worried since I was a kid that, oh, you know, what if I've heard alcoholism is in the genes and it's, it's in their brain and it's something that's like that. I don't have it. Not going to have it. Not going to allow myself to have it. I've made the decision, right? So if you're out there and you have an uh, alcoholic parent in some sort of way, or maybe they addicted to drugs in some sort of way, you can make the decision, I will not allow that to be me. I saw the way my parents took care of, care of the body. That won't be me. That's what you can say to yourself. I appreciate myself too much. I'm gonna pay attention to the food that I consume. I'm gonna pay attention to working out. I'm gonna pay attention to the sleep that I get, the amount of water that I drink. Taking care of your body or not taking care of your body, that is a decision. Whether you want to pretend that it is not your decision and you're just given these circumstances, there's nothing you can do about it, is up to you. But ultimately, everything in your life is your decision. Next, let's talk about business. You know what I love, why I love business? I love business because if you're a business owner, your business is a part of you. Your business is a living, breathing, thing that is externally outside of you. If your business is doing amazing, that's usually a reflection of how you're doing in your own mind. If your business is plummeting or it's not taking off, or it's, you know, you feel like you've been spinning your wheels for a while, well, you've got to look at yourself. Stop looking at the external, look at the internal and say, okay, if it's a mirror of me, how can I improve and what do I need to do in order to take my life to the next level, in order to take my personal development to the next level? Because your business will never outgrow you. Your bank account will never outgrow you. They will only lag, you know, they will lag behind your personal development, your spiritual development, your development of yourself. Your business will not outgrow the container that you are. And you can grow the container that you are with everything that you learn, everything that you get better at. So your business, it is a reflection of you. If it's doing amazing, you're probably doing pretty well. If it's not doing well, there's probably some things that you could pick up and change and make better than yourself. And your business will be a reflection of that. See what I'm saying here? That's a decision. When you look at your bank account, believe me, I've had overdraft fees 
many, 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 many times. And I'm like, damn, this <laughs> Bank of America keeps taking 30 bucks from me, even though I've only got five bucks in my bank account. And I overdraw and I go to like negative $1. And then I'm like negative $31. I'm like, how the hell am I negative 31? Oh, because Bank of America wanted to take 30 bucks from me. I've been in that situation before. I've been five months behind on my car payment. I've been in the situation where I've almost lost everything, like really close. But I took a step back and realized that that was just a reflection of where I was in my life. And as I grew, my bank account grew, my business grew, everything that I did grew. I'm only telling you this because I can tell you just from experience, when I noticed that things weren't going the way I wanted them to in my life, I looked at myself and said, oh, I am the reason why. My life is the culmination of my decisions that I'm making, of everything that I've made. If you look at your family, How's your family life going? You know, it could be your relationship with your wife. How's that going? Well, it's probably a reflection, reflection of you, you know, and what, how you're showing up. It's a reflection of them and how they're showing up. Your relationship with your children, it's a reflection of the decisions that you make. And you can look at it and say, okay, you know, there were some great aspects of my parents. There were some not great aspects of my parents in the way that they raised me. Everyone can look at that and can identify the things that they love about their parents, the things they didn't love about their parents. And they can make a decision that they're not going to follow the exact same path, or they can just make no decision and just blindly do the exact same thing that their parents did. And it's just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. Then your children will do the same and their children will do the same. Do you want that to be a generational thing? Or do you want to stop it right now? That's fully up to you. It's fully your decision. So what is it that you want? When you look at your relationships with everybody outside of your family, maybe it's outside of your, your, you know, your children and your spouse, maybe you look at your relationship with your parents and you say, okay, you know, it isn't the best that it could be better. Okay, well then I need to make the decision that I'm going to show up differently because they're probably not going to make a decision to show up differently. I'm going to make a decision that I'm going to show up differently next time I'm around them. It's like Ram Dass always says, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your family, right? Your family knows the triggers. They know what to do. They trigger you more than anybody else. They show us where we need to improve. They show us and teach us. There's so many lessons in every single thing that happens to us when we're around them. So when you look at that, you go, okay, it could be better with my relationships with my mom, with my father, with my sister, with my brother, with my aunts, uncles. I'm going to make the decision. I don't care how they show up. I'm going to show up differently from now on. And they're going to probably eventually start to show up differently as well. That's a good thing to do. Okay, let's go to the next thing. What about our relationship with our friends? We can stay and stay friends with somebody simply just because we've known them for a long time and we feel obligated to spend time with them simply because we've known each other since we were six years old. I'm not saying break any friendships and never see somebody ever again, but do you have relationships that are not serving you as much anymore? It is your decision that you're staying in those relationships. It is also your decision if you decide that you want to get out of those relationships or spend less time in those relationships. Everything around you is your decision. Stop acting like you don't have power or control over your life. Because the moment that you decide to step into the driver's seat and say, you know what? When I look at my body, I know I can change and make it better. When I look at my business, I know I can change and I can make it better. When I look at my bank account, I know I can change and I can make it better. When I look at my relationship with my spouse, I can make it better. When I look at my children, I look at it and see that I can make my relationship with them better. When I look at my family, my relationship with my mom and my dad and my brother and my sister, my aunts, I can make all of those better. When I look at my relationship with my children, they can, they can be better. When I look at my relationship with my friends and the people that I surround myself with, all of those things can be better. So what do I have to do? I can either sit back and make a decision to not make the decision to change, which is still a decision, and keep everything exactly the same. Or if something's going to change, I'm gonna to need to change. I'm gonna to need to step up and make the decision that I'm going to change every single aspect of my life of what I do. I'm gonna make sure I do everything differently. If I'm not happy about where my life is right now, I'm just gonna start doing everything differently. I go to bed late, I'm gonna start going to bed early. I'm gonna start waking up early. If I normally talk negatively to myself, I'm gonna start talking positive to myself. If I normally eat a, a cheeseburger for lunch, I'm gonna start eating a salad. If I normally don't work out, I'm gonna start working out. Just do something differently. Make the decision to do something different and do it for 30 days and see how you feel. And if you don't like it, change it. Make something else. You're not a tree. You're not stuck in the exact same position forever. You can change at any moment. The only thing that you have to have the awareness of is that you have the power to change at any moment. Nobody's telling you that you have to stay the same. The only one that's telling you that you have to stay the same is you. Either you stay in the exact same circumstances and make that decision to stay, or you wake up, you change, and you decide that you're going to do something different with your life. Whatever you decide, 
is your decision. You're born looking like your parents. You die looking like your decisions. What are the decisions that you're gonna make to change your life? Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Either you do it or you don't. There is no other options. You get the life that you want to, or you don't get the life that you want to. If you don't do anything and you're too lazy, your life is not going to be what you want it to be. You're tricking yourself into thinking that you're stuck in a rut.